We have with us tonight Finite Atticus from, uh, starts with an M. Uh, <laughs> Massachusetts. Massachusetts, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm having one of those blank nights. You say it starts with an L and then it was Massachusetts? No, I said M. It starts with an M. <laughs> I thought you said an L. No, no. <laughs> I was going to say, that's way off. That's way off. Well, it's right next to the M. The L is right next to the M. (laughs) We have uh, Atticus from Massachusetts. Uh, I've got a few questions for you, uh, Atticus. Were you ever religious, and uh, how did you come to your non-belief? I was born into a religious family, Mm -hmm. um, and I... Uh, it was to my detriment because uh, I was in the closet. I, I've I've known that I was gay probably since very early childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, let me see. Uh, I I it was a an Advent Christian church uh, home, and uh, we were not extremely strict, but strict enough to where non belief couldn't be spoken about. But I believed, so I guess that was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, where being gay couldn't be talked about because that was also a, a negative thing. Yeah. Um, so I kept it to myself. Um, I, I eventually, uh, let me see, I, I had so many trials and tribulations. I made a YouTube series about it. Um, but eventually what happened was I, I was um, divorced alone, uh, recently divorced, <laughs> very alone, and I uh, discovered uh, YouTube atheism. Hmm. And from there, I started to question my beliefs to the point where I just sort of uh, woke up one day. And I, I know this doesn't happen to everybody, but I woke up one day and realized that I no longer believed the things that I did anymore. Yeah, I, I've talked to a, a lot of people on the show and uh, I've listened to a lot of podcasts. And some people say, well, no, it's a gradual thing. You don't usually hear about the, OK, I'm, uh, I believe one day and all of a sudden like a light switch. It's off. Um, no, I would describe it as a. It was a long process. Okay. But the thing was, I, I also uh, during my early my my may say, ten eleven years old, I mm-hmm. I was I also developed obsessive compulsive disorder, mm. and uh, it, this this made it a very diff because it was always cent- centered around my religious beliefs. It made it very complicated for me to 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 decide that I decide to actually think about what non-belief would be like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that over the years, eventually, it just got to the point where it was in my head, and uh, the the YouTube atheist community put so much of that information inside of me that, uh, and I had to deal with the fear. Uh, I, I described it better in the in the in the episode that I put oh. on my channel. But I, so I I just sort of woke up one day and someone asked me if I if I believed and I said no I don't believe that I'm an atheist and I I was really just floored by the fact that I said it mm-hmm. um, because usually I I would approach that type of situation with a lot of fear with a lot of anger and with a lot of confusion but instead I was like nope. I guess that's just the way that is now. Yeah, I, I, nothing wrong um, with that. And I think that my my mind was trying to save me from the heart attack, and uh, eventually I did feel a lot of a lot of feelings of sorrow and uh, depression as a result of it. But they they didn't last too long um, mm-hmm. because I had friends to tell me that everything was okay. Well, that's good at least. Yeah, and uh, one of those people was. Um, Purple Fox, uh, who is another person who wrote a wonderful deconversion series on YouTube, and uh, I actually I met him in person. Oh, cool! Um, he lives not not far from me, um, and uh, to be able to talk to a person directly who's been through a lot of those experiences was really help helpful. Oh, yeah, absolutely, I would agree. Uh, I have another question here for you. Um, you recently did a video where you're talking about your daughter, how this one girl was picking on her, and I used it in the uh, the intro clip for the the guest shot. Uh, mm-hmm. It says you were going to just like, would I toast this little girl? <laughs> well, maybe not. But <laughs> what is <laughs> was that the inspiration the the behind that video? Um, well, really, what it was was I was just so I mean I, I'm not going to use my usual. Uh, uh, writing style when I describe this, I, I'm just going to be like, you know, like we're, we're sitting around having coffee. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm talking to my daughter and we're coloring and she just starts asking me all these weird questions, stuff that she's never asked me before. Mm. You know, well, does, does life, does life continue on after death or, 
uh, what happens? What happened if the moon hit the the Earth? Um, you know, what it, what happens when the universe ends? Uh, you know, do you believe there's a God? All of those things, and I'm sitting there going, "Oh fuck, wow." <laughs> This this little girl is experiencing all of the things I experienced over the years, mm-hmm. except in like one moment. And and when I explained to her what I what I believed and when I think about those situations, I was like, I, I don't I don't believe there's life after death. And she was she was like, can you stop telling me this? Because oh, really? it was terrifying to her. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, and she thought she thought for a while. And then she was like, I, you know, I told her, I said, you don't have to believe what I believe you can believe what you like because I I've always had this precedent where if I tell my kids what to think then they can't be free thinkers true it's impossible yeah true um so she you know she thought about it for a while and she's like I don't know and I said well that's that's perfect that's wonderful right there I I (laughs) I don't know is an honest answer Mm -hmm. it's an honest answer um, and I, it's a better place than most of the kids are at her age. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, how do you go about producing your videos, and how do you film and edit them? So a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll just pick a situation from my life where something either really shitty happened. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's mostly only <laughs> something really <laughs> shitty that happened. <laughs> I've been listening to your series on iTunes so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, it, you know, and well, you know, Jason and I make fun of it on the on the iTunes, but on, on my YouTube channel, I try to be serious with it. Okay. It's, so I I take that situation and I take a very minimalist approach to writing about it. I don't try to put in too many, too many 50 cent words or or blather for a long time. I just if you're going to talk about falling down the stairs mm-hmm. just say I fell down the stairs. There's no reason to 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 really to be like, I fell and doth broke my skull open, and you know there's no reason for that <laughs> stuff. I just uh, not not that that's how. I mean, I don't need a Dickensian style writing. Well, um, it, it does add a lot of description, and the blood spurt all over. <laughs> yeah, I you know, it, but I, I I just feel the minimalist approach in a YouTube video is the best way to go because you just get mm-hmm. right to the point. Um, and I will sit there and I, I grab a sheet of paper mm. uh, and I use a pencil, old world style, and I free write about the situation. Uh, whether it's just one word or a sentence or anything and it looks like a big jumbled mess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there I leave it and wait a few days. And I know it takes me a long time to produce a video. Uh, mm. I Then I go to Microsoft Word or whatever I have here and... I just start to write about it. And what's what's funny is if I do the free association thing first, that I will have that, you know, five page script written in a few hours. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> How do you edit these? I mean, a lot of your shots are like still shots. Do you do any like a uh, live video shots and how do you how do you edit all that stuff? Um, I, I almost never use live shots. I I'm I, I, I I, what I do is I I will pick a specific word, and I will underline it on you know in the in the word processor, mm-hmm. and I will find just a a photo. I usually look for a high quality photo, okay, but nothing with celebrities or anything like that because I don't want to get flagged and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, Absolutely. And I'll put that on the screen, and during each one of those shots, I will I will take the. Um, there's a on iMovie. I actually use iMovie just to produce my videos. It's hey, that's a, what I use. <laughs> yeah, it it works. It works really well. Mm-hmm. And um, I take a. I just put titles on them. It'll say like a a, a pull focus title, mm-hmm. and I will take one of the lines and I'll put that on the screen. Um, and really, other than that, I that's that's the that's my editing process. I I don't think that that should be too complicated. You know, I'm not I'm not like a, a talking head. I'm not like a, a wait a minute. I'm a talking head like that. So wait well, a minute. I mean, wait a minute. I'm I mean, a talking head here. <laughs> he's he's the great and powerful Oz. I am the great and powerful Packard. <laughs> great and powerful Oz. <laughs> yeah, just don't pull back that curtain. He's not wearing exactly. Pants. I'm right? not wearing pants. Uh, <laughs> But it's not too complicated, no. Okay. Uh, it's actually very simple. Yeah, okay. Uh, how did you get into making the YouTube videos? All right. So um, let's say in about 
2011 to 2012 mm-hmm. when I was watching. See, I, I had a I had a job uh, where I was working at a computer, and we were allowed to use our phones to listen to podcasts and you know not watch YouTube necessarily, but sort of put something over your phone and listen to to what you know what's going on. And mm-hmm. uh, after watching the the YouTube series by Evidence, uh, why I'm no why I'm no longer a Christian. And uh, Purple Fox's deconversion series okay. and uh, Xander's Meteor. Oh, I I oh, sat Xander. there and said, "Wow, I really wish I could write one of those." And I I eventually I eventually came to the conclusion that I probably should just write this down for me. Mm-hmm. And I decided to make a video. Oh, I mean, it's I I was listening to about about yeah so two thousand. 12 logic had just started making videos Mm. and he had been on for a while and he made this video called uh, a year on youtube or something like that and he said he said something to the effect of just make a fucking video (laughs) and he said don't don't worry about whether or not people will like it who cares i mean that's that's how you that's how you just get out there so i just produced this one video um uh, deconversion, the beginning of the end, and I had no plans to make any more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got a shout out from uh, Coffee with Claire, and okay. I got a shout out from oh, the Atheist Hub mirrored one of my other videos that wasn't part of the series. Atheist Hub isn't around much anymore. I I haven't seen anything new come from their content from their channel in a while. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, it's um, that's well, that's uh, that's Peter. That's um. Essence of thought. Yeah, we had him on the show. Some other English bros. Yeah. And uh, I think they just went their separate ways or whatever. Or maybe people aren't asking them anymore. Yeah, I I don't know. What is one of the best video channels you've ever seen on YouTube? I mean, besides, you know, Peckard Folks at. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that's a that's a loaded question. It's a hard hard question to answer. Question. Um. Let me see. We could just say I love Packard Pokes at and we'll be, be done. <laughs> I I do love the show actually. I just haven't been able to catch it on Fridays because, you know, we're usually doing stuff and for a while we were doing the um the Friday Fun House with Jason with the D. Yeah. Um but yeah, I catch it on uh um uh, iTunes now. But yeah, no, I um let me see. I would have to say the best channel that I I have found in years mm-hmm. is probably evidence's channel um it's it, he he makes some of the most quality content i have ever seen and it's all home home run home based he doesn't you know he's also doing it uh i believe he's a professor now at this point uh i whatever whatever college he's working at um, but yeah, I would say that's, that's probably one of the best channels. And then there are some other ones that I, I really like their content, not, not because they're popular, but because they, they just put out good content every time I watch it. Sure. Uh, I would say, mm-hmm. um, SciShow is one of them and that's not oh, atheist, yeah. but that's, uh, I mean, I, although they won't admit it, I'm pretty sure that both of the vlog brothers are atheists. Yeah. Um, I've, I, I, I subbed to the, uh, to the SciShow too. Some really good stuff on there. I see people down thumb and it's like, this is good information. Why are you down thumbing this? I'm like, oh yeah, these are people who the fucking creationists. It's like information bad, you know. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, how could I forget? I mean, Vsauce. Oh, Vsauce, um, yeah. You know, I, it, the thing is, a lot of a lot of people don't get it, but they just I I sit back and I go, this guy is an atheist, but he can't take he can't publicly take that stance because YouTube is his is his job. I yeah, it's bread and butter. Yeah, I mean, if he does that, I I don't I don't see people stop watching his stuff. I don't think he, I, you know, if he came out and said he was an atheist, I really don't think there'd be a uh, issue. So yeah, somebody's eating chips. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I I should have shut off my mic while I was doing that. That's I was, okay. <laughs> I I am so poor that I roll my cigarettes. Oh, is that what that is? I thought you're eating, but I thought you're like, oh, gotta have a potato chip. I, they're just I, like, I got. They're calling me. No worries, man. <laughs> I, I have one last question, and I'm going to turn it over to my co-host. Uh, what do you do outside of your YouTube persona? Do you have a job? Uh, do you hunt monkeys? What do you, What do you do? Oh man, hunting monkeys would be awesome. But, uh, <laughs> I am a I'm a home care specialist for mm. an elderly man who lives not far from me. 
Um, I, if anybody doesn't know what that is, I'm a, I'm a nurse's aide, um, which is something that is just under a nurse, but I guess nurses are too good to do that job, so they created oh. us. Okay. <laughs> um, and I ca- I just take care for his uh, daily needs. He's 89 years old, and I get paid for you know a, a good amount for doing you know three days a week worth of work. I, and it's part time because I'm also a full time student. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, I go to university, and uh, I I got into this wonderful university in Central Massachusetts that I. I didn't. I could not believe that I got in, but I now I'm now I'm here and I'm ready to finish. And I have, I believe, a semester and a half left. Um, and uh, I study biology. Um, I want to go to PA school to learn to be a physician's assistant. Cool. And if my grades aren't good enough to get me in there, which is kind of looking that way, but mm. uh, you know it, that happens to a lot of people. I'm probably sure. going to stay at the school I'm at and go for my degree in evolutionary biology okay some of those other ones that you were telling you you have the have the grades for some of those people uh, some of those uh studies and things you almost have to be neurotic about it to get those kind of grades to pass those things yeah well and and that's the thing is i'm i'm also you know i i hate to put it this way but a a part-time father um, it, because I'm, I'm divorced. I, but I, I have, I have shared custody of my children. Uh, my ex-wife and I go. get along really well. well that's so, good. um, you know, I, I take them as much as I can. I, mm-hmm. I, I go to her place sometimes and hang out with them. I mean, it's everything school. So I, oh, I can't, good. I can't take out of my time with them, you know, a lot of the time oh, to, I, to study. I, I understand that. I, I have two daughters of my own, and I went through the divorce thing and the, with the kids back and forth. So I understand all that. So mm-hmm. uh, that's why when you when you did the thing about the video uh, about the, with the your talk to your daughter there, um, that I was like, oh man, I've, 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 I I I I identify with that. I hit you in the feels. Yeah, you hit me right in the feels. The feels. You hit me right in the feels. <laughs> that's what I try to do. I, I, I try to I try to manipulate words so that so that a person goes ah, oh, just one person. Yeah, oh. I, I recognize it because you know I'm a dad, so and I have two daughters, so I I recognize all that shit. So, Connie, did you have some questions for uh, Atticus? You know, you are such a great storyteller. Um, I just can't imagine. I know you. I mean, I've listened to your channel for a long time, and I've also listened to the Let Me Finish. I mean. So I've heard so much of your story, but as a teen, you I can't imagine you not sitting there and just cracking up an entire room of people with stories because you're so, so good at it. I, I, is this the first that you've really been able to regale people with your In your the humor? past five years, yes. Are you um, kidding? I, oh. I would have to say that during I, – I, see, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, anybody – during my teenage years, I wasn't I wasn't a thing. I was just kind of there. Um, and uh, I did do a podcast with Jason about how about what had happened that made me leave high school. It's called um, Oh Love Feelings and Hornswoggle. Oh yeah, and, I remember that one. Yeah, it's the one where I talk about a person named Bobby, which was a guy that I was in love in, with in high school. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was really the only time that I felt opened up during that during that you know, teenage period where I was like, oh, this is wonderful. It's like all flowers and roses because you're in love with somebody. It's too bad they're, you know, a fucking dildo. Um, <laughs> and you can't see it because you've got rose-colored glasses on. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. But I wasn't I wasn't the type of person that sat around and just told a story. I No one, no one really cared about what I had to say. Um, That's such a shame. Ah, uh, well, you know... I, I look back on it now and I'm like, well, I'm here. I'm here now. That's you know? right. That's right. It's as well, life leads you up to a certain point and then, you know, the, when, the, when everybody's ready, then the teacher comes, that kind of thing, I guess. But, uh, I'm just really, I'm just, I'm just blown away because I, I just love how you, how you are so verbal. Um, and, uh, I, I love you. I love when you talked about your process too, that was really interesting. So, I mean, you know, you just write. You can, uh, you can thank Chuck Palahniuk for, for that. <laughs> yeah. Chuck Palahniuk. Yeah, he is my one of my absolute favorite writers. He is, oh. He's one of my absolute favorites as well. So kudos to that. Yeah. Sweet. 
Sweet. At that sort of minimalist writing is is he was kind of my influence for that. But when I do get descriptive, that's mostly um, Stephen King, Kurt Vonnegut. Okay. People oh. like that. Also, yeah, yeah I love Stephen King. All my Everybody, favorites he, here. People either love him or hate him, don't they? I mean, because mm-hmm. he's so verbose. He's, <laughs> but I'm like, who is Stephen King? More. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I don't understand how anybody can hate anything by him. But see, this is the thing: is that I, yeah. I think of Stephen King as the writer for people who hate reading. <laughs> There isn't, you know, there isn't a person that I know that's like, oh, well, I hate all of his work. You can always go, well, come on. What about uh, uh, Rose Matter or uh, my favorite, my personal favorite, and I recommend it to anybody who's listening and all of you guys, 112263. Of course. Probably the most wonderful book he ever wrote, and oh, I cried. It's, it's the so easiest. Good. That's the easiest book to transition into his writing if you're not a fan of horror. I'll, yeah. ha- I'll have to see if I can find it on audio podcast audio. Oh yeah, download the ver- yeah when it's read. Uh, I did download I, I that as say, well. I mean, after Stephen I read King, it. Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Chuck Palahniuk. It all it, you're you're touching upon my favorite authors there. You, uh, you're touching uh, his feels, uh, Atticus. You're really. So my, <laughs> I mean, my feels are being touched. They're being fondled. They're being feelied. <laughs> my well, my there, absolute Dave. favorite book though is is Dune by Frank Herbert. Um, I, I, I mentioned that book quite a bit in, in throughout a lot of my stories, but he, Frank Herbert, the, I mean, a, a lot of his other books, they were just like, oh, God, stop, just stop. Um, but that one is so fantastic. I mean, it, it kills Lord of the Rings. I don't care who loves that. I, I love sure. that book. <laughs> I can see that. Mm. I'm not an either or person, but I can understand preferring one over another that's that's awesome yeah did you have any more did you have any more questions there connie i'm gonna pass it to dave like i said i i listen to everything (laughs) okay i'm I'm loving just listening okay (laughs) dave your your questions for atticus yeah i've i've got a few um and i stole his best one (laughs) of of course we we discussed before the show started uh i want to ask about your your writing the the way that you use language in your videos and everything else it seems to me to be and it's it's impressive you do a really good job of commanding the the language well that's the uh, thing though is a, a lot of people think that you need to it, like if i were to write a, a character yeah um you don't have to describe the person by saying oh they're shifty all the time Instead of saying instead of saying that they're shifty all the time, you describe something that they're doing. Rather, you say, "This person." You say, um, "You know, James is walking down the street, checking checking to see how many wallets are hanging out of the pockets." You know, things like that, and then you know that they're shifty. You don't you don't yeah, have to it, describe it what describes shifty character. Is. My my question here is uh, whether and I and I think you answered this earlier, but. Uh, whether or not you're intending to write something concrete as far as written words from your experiences. Yep, I I am. I'm in the process of developing how to put my deconversion series into a novel or a book, a biography. Awesome. Oh, that, that'd be cool. And uh, it's I, I realize that fleshing out my YouTube series is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. Um, it'll be a lot more descriptive. It, it will include a lot more things that I pro- I you probably just can't put on YouTube, but you can put in the written word, especially under a, a surname or a, a name that isn't really yours. Yeah, under um, a pseudonym name. Yeah, you, you can you if you if you want to, you can put it under Packard. <laughs> uh, you know what? I I got a uh, you Packard. know the, the most recent podcast. Series. Jason scolded me and said. That if I didn't give him uh, a dedication in the beginning of the book, he would murder me to death. <laughs> um, but I'm 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 going to dedicate. I'm probably going to dedicate it uh, to a lot to just mostly the YouTube atheist community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're you're welcome to send me a copy and have me read it and write a review for you. I mean, I'll I'll sure and, and when you're and when you get ready to publish or whatever and it's and you want to put it out just you can come back and we'll 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 hawk your book on here oh that's sweet yeah i i was well, just thinking like I, I, I i'd love to do that 
I would I would absolutely love it if you know something like that took off. But I'm thinking a lot of publishing companies probably I mean they'll they'll do it for somebody like Christopher Hitchens. You know what I mean? Write it, get a book about atheism and it, put that out there. But. I know a lot of publishing houses that you can do it yourself. You don't need to go through some big ass it, thing and to do. And self-publishing is now something that's very big. And you can yep. find people who run entire businesses off of promoting self-published books. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I could do that and then plug it on, on my channel. But, sure. I, you know, I'm probably going to be like, okay, I'm sending it off to Putnam Books and... Yeah. And all these other guys, and they'll, you know, they'll probably pass it. I don't know. I, I try to be optimistic, but at the same time, I try to be realistic. Mm, absolutely. You know, um, I would I would absolutely love it if, if you know, lots of people would read it. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, I got to get the I got to get the pen on pen on paper. You know, I'll I'll sure. promote it for you. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll promote it here I, on the I'm show just, for you. I'm just a guy, but I'll I'll help you. <laughs> Please, thank you. I'll put um, it everywhere. I, I have another question, and this this may be personal, but nothing too personal. That's for... that's the impression that I get, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, as a man who came out as gay later on in your life, uh, what was the experience like of getting married to a heterosexual female and having children? I mean, was that did you feel that was pressured or? Or what? What was that like? I mean, you you expressed. Well, I mean, there was, it was a conundrum of feelings. I so I I love I loved my ex wife. I still love her very much. Um, yeah. But it took me forever to realize that there are different types of love. Yeah. Um, I when when I was in the middle of, of being with her, it was it was like a normal heterosexual relationship. You fight about stupid shit. Um, you break up, you get back together, you you find out that you're you're pregnant, and you decide that well, she's pregnant, not me. Um, Wait a minute, you, you got pregnant? <laughs> hey, hey, now we got this for the medical books now. <laughs> you you decide you decide oh the best thing I can do is get married. Plus that'll be good in the eyes of God. All of this stuff, but I can tell you um, that I did a I did a um, I did a video on YouTube in which uh, it's called On My Family. Um, which is part seven, I believe. And there's a scene in the middle where you can see two people getting married. And that video is from my actual wedding. Okay. I, and I, 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 when I'm standing there saying, I do, and my uncle, who's a pastor, is marrying us, mm -hmm. and my son is sitting there holding the rings, what I was thinking about was uh, another man that I was in love with. And Honestly. I was like, this is going to be bad. Like, my mind actually, I, I said that to myself, this is going to be bad. You're going to hurt her. Oh, that sucks, I, man. I yeah. have a I have a follow up kind of a springboard question off of what Dave asked. Um, I had a conversation with some nut job several years ago, uh, where they said, you know, you can't have uh, somebody that has a family or whatever, uh, but you're living proof of that. I mean, it, it, I of course one instance is not a data point, but this is this is not one instance and not one data point. Oh, there yeah, are a lot no, of guys I, out there that they 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 follow yeah, uh, the, the 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 whole. I'm gonna get. I, I should get married because that's the thing I'm expected to do, and I or I get uh, somebody pregnant, but I'm having these feelings, and then they come out gay later. Um, yeah, Packer, that, I mean that's that's honestly. I mean, I'm I'm a straight guy. Mm -hmm truly wonders what that's like because i i can't understand it i mean i i yeah honestly, well i i would have to say i mean it. um there's all there's a lot of argument from from gay purism where yeah. people seem to think and i i i not not any of you i'm saying but i i find generally is that because the tv told them that that gay men don't ever have sex with women yeah. Um, that that means that they're not capable of it. And I would have to say, no, uh, most of us are, are capable of doing it. We're just not very interested. I mean, I, I don't I don't look at a vagina and run away. You know, oh, my I, God, I, a I, vagina. <laughs> yeah, but that's, yeah. that's I guess I guess that's my question. Is I, I look at it and I this, say that's a thing. My, my question is, like, did were you attracted to that woman when you conceived children? I mean, um. I, 
I would have to say I I when I think of a, a beautiful woman, I appreciate her much like I appreciate a a, a Van Gogh. Okay, um, okay. That's and fair. I appreciated that woman because I loved her personally. Yeah. Um, but as far as sexual attraction went, um, mostly what I was thinking about was, oh goody, I get to put my dick somewhere other than in my hand. It's it's about the same as it's about the same as uh, I get that. I would liken it to you know you're you're a straight guy and you you can't always have sex. It's impossible, um, and we're constantly you know inundated by our biology. Uh, gay men are exactly the same way, uh, except the majority of the time you know it's it's easier for us to have sex. Um, so when you're in a marriage and you're in a situation where you're with you're with someone that you can have sex with, yeah, the idea of having sex is enough. So that you can just sort of go ahead and do it. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to dissuade that. I mean, I always thought, you know, that, yeah, this is possible because of the fact is, you know, they, in times before, you know, beforehand, my age or whatever, they would say, uh, yeah, I, I was having these feelings, but I didn't, I, I couldn't act on them then because family expectations and, or whatever, and that I'm sure that's a, a yeah. And I, I wouldn't say I didn't I didn't enjoy it. I mean, it was just it was a thing that I felt like I had to do. You know, uh, it was something that I had to do, and it was it was better than nothing. Okay, you felt you, felt you had to do it. Um, yeah. I mean, well, because I needed. I I mean, I I I wanted to have sex, and there's my wife. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, I, uh, I, it, so, okay, so if I wanted these, to have sex with these, someone and you were married to someone. Yeah, if I want these sort of sexual feelings to go away, uh -huh. well, you know, going, going ahead and having sex with the person that's there is, right. is the best thing you can do. So I, that's what I mean by have to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we had a comment from the chat room, Connie. Uh, she says, uh, straight men don't love vaginas for their looks. If we were honest, we're probably more attracted to the software boobs, but haha. -ha. So <laughs> <laughs> we all said one from micro. Two... We all said we did one... have two questions though. Okay, we'll get to those in just a moment. Uh, we also had one account from microbloggerism. He says, uh, "Run, run! The vagina monster is coming." <laughs> yeah. And I, I have to say, I have met a few gay men who are like that, but the majority of the gay men that I meet, and uh, it, to be on, to be completely honest, uh, the when I was when I did my oh I can't remember what part of the deconversion it series it was it was I have to I, I I wrote a part where I was talking about how I had to go out and find it and have sex with a guy just to get it out of me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I met I met a straight married man in church, and I didn't realize what he was on about until much later on, which was that he he was attracted to me and he was asking me to lunch in quotations. Oh. And uh, a, f a few about a week later, I went to a gay bar, and there he was sitting there. Oh, and I I went to he he had an apartment that he had aside from being with his wife, mm -hmm. and I had sex with him there. Nice. Um, and Wait, nice uh, for you. I mean, it's not, it's... <laughs> but generally, generally, I find a lot of a lot of the gay men that I'll meet that are near my age are men who are who were married um, out out of what they felt was necessity. Mm -hmm. And now they're coming out of the closet because they they're realizing it's OK, you know. OK. Um, I did have a couple of questions from the chat room here. Um, one is from Dawkins dog. Uh, thank you for your question, Dawkins. He says, uh, what has caused you more problems with friends and family coming out gay or coming out atheist? Oh, coming out atheist. Really? Jeez. When when I so. Again, I keep referring to my YouTube channel. I, I made a video uh, called Mother about coming out to my mother. And uh, she she fully appreciated, understood, and f and had felt feelings that she, she loved me and she did not care even though she was a strong Christian. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she the first thing that she did when before we had our big conversation uh, was to call all of my family members and say, did you guys know this? Did you guys know this? And everybody was like, yeah, we knew that. You're the last person to know. <laughs> uh, she called my aunt, and my aunt, my aunt was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew. He loves dick. I mean, how could you not see that your entire <laughs> life?" Um, and these are Christians. My, these are very strong Christians who all knew this, and they were like, "We we knew. We all knew." 
And my mother had blinders on, apparently, because I had gotten married and done all the mm -hmm. the straight guy things, I guess. Well, I shouldn't put it that way because being marriage and children is not just for straight people anymore, is it? No. Um, it's, for, it's for macaroni and cheese, too. It's what I'm hearing. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, But uh, anyway, coming out as an atheist was more difficult to her um, because she... Uh, my my mother uh, and and this is just specifically her. Most of most of the other, all of the other times I come out as an atheist to, the, to everybody else, it's a huge argument. But mm -hmm. for her, it was a sorrowful thing because she oh. she um, when she was sixteen, my mother was run over by a potato harvester. Um, if you don't know what that is, I, uh, I, know, what, the, I know what a potato harvester is. Okay, yeah, I'm just being a, still a jerk. Right now. So anyway, back in the back in the '60s, mm -hmm. um, she was working on a potato farm because during three weeks of the year, they they take the kids out of school to earn money picking potatoes. Yeah, and uh, she happened to be out there picking potatoes uh, during that time to you know you get your what a dollar a bushel or whatever they paid them. And she got run over by one of the harvesters, one wow. of the wheels, one of those big giant tractor wheels. Yeah, that's and scary. And it crushed her body unbelievably. She broke, I believe, 100 of the 206 bones in the human body. And wow. she was not projected to live, but she did and graduated from high school with honors from a hospital bed. Wow. And that is her God story is that she is a miracle as a result of this. Um, now, I didn't really get into it and be like, oh, don't thank the doctor's mom. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, because this is her, you know, this is your mother. This is your story, her story. And I wasn't going to sit there and be like, oh, well, fuck you. It was the doctors who saved you. Um, I love my mother very much. And I, you know, I, I, I respected what she was saying. Mm -hmm. um, but she was like, if there's no God, then I would have died. Oh, um, and, you know, then thereafter, it was mostly the evolution argument. Uh, it's just it always comes down to the same thing is that they, you know, they have a tendency to believe that anyone who understands how evolution works automatically is an atheist. Oh, my gosh. You understand a thing that makes you an atheist automatically. No. Yeah. Is that is that how she still? I explained to her what evolution actually was, um, but I guess she. She just kind of brushed it off as you're never going to get me to believe that the world wasn't created by God. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Okay, but that's not evolution. She... No. Right. Yeah. I was going to say recently, I heard this on another podcast, that the, the, they're saying now that the reason why that the bone is not missing from the uh, the man, because, you know, man, there's a, this old say, there's old belief that uh, women have more chest bones rib bones because they supposedly took a bone from the man and gave it to her to make her now they're this they're saying now that this is a uh mistranslation and they took the bone from the penis and <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm well, kidding i'm I mean, not i am definitely i am seriously I, you know what i'm not that kidding kind of close to the truth because event, uh, other other apes and monkeys do have uh uh, a bone inside of their penis that makes really? it come out. Right. Yeah, well, I don't believe, I don't know if it's apes. I believe it's other other, other relatives. Any, any other like, ape. Like, like a cartilage? Uh, nope, a bone. An oh, actual it's a bone. bone. Actual bone. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, I, okay. The, I believe bone. humans humans are the one are the only ones that have humans a phallus are, yeah, entirely made humans of Humans are the of only cartilage. ones that have that, that specific, or lack that bone, rather. Okay. Mm -hmm. Microblogonism says the baculum. Uh, yep. Nope. He's. Yep. It, if you want good information, go to him. Don't go to me. I drink too much. <laughs> the baculum wins. He's, he's absolutely Surprise correct. Tonight. The baculum Yay. is the name of the bone. <laughs> yeah. We got to get him on staff. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, you go from here. Yeah. Um, Tarvian said in some places in the southern Missouri, guys will give their girl a raccoon pelvis. Bone for their for their love. <laughs> oh wow, that's just gross. Oh, you you think that's gross? I got I got one better. Uh, when I was younger, I was over at a cousin's house, and they they had looked looked like a walking stick. I was like, oh well, that's interesting looking. It's like, yeah, that came from a bull. I'm like, oh okay, that's <laughs> wow. I have a I have a friend who has repeatedly told us on on uh, the hangouts. I don't know if you've met Zelda. No, um, I don't have not yet. 
Uh, she's been on a very public spanking of, and she's been in the Friday Fun House. But uh, she is a she's a YouTube friend, and she's from the South, and she she has eaten squirrel pie, and squirrel nuggets, I've and eaten squirrel. squirrel steaks. Uh, I've eaten squirrel salad, personally. How, how is it? How is it? Uh, it's it's fine. I mean, I I've eaten a lot of stuff. It's. It's fine. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I mean, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm it's, about it's, to eat a notebook. It's meat that tastes like, I mean, it, most meat tastes like what the animal's diet is, and it's meat that tastes kind of nutty. It's, it's fun. <laughs> it's <laughs> nutty. <laughs> it is. Yep. Well, I it's, bet it tastes... No, I can, uh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking mind. different nuts. I'm sorry. You are, like, I mean, I honestly, yeah. I don't mind squirrel. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it like venison, where it tastes kind of like there's a little bit of dirt in the flesh? Game? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. The, I I understand that comparison and think that that's probably true. Dave, okay. I, I I've got squirrels all around me. I'll start plugging them and I'll send them to you. I don't want you to do that. Most of those squirrels are probably <laughs> sick. Fuck off, Packard. I don't want. <laughs> no, these are all healthy squirrels. I, I ate I ate squirrels from a forest that were like. Healthy squirrels. These are healthy squirrels. Are you are you like Survivor Man? You just go off every once in a while and. You know what? I I would like to be. <laughs> right. I, I don't know that I am, but I would like to be. Just Pray. pack up and go. Bring your video camera. We'll make it into one of those uh, horror movies where they just find the camera afterwards. <laughs> I've got I've got a goddamn backpack that has like a Bowie knife connected to it and like. You know, I got patches on my backpack. I'm ready to go. <laughs> we had a comment from the chat room. Uh, uh, Raz on Ungod. Uh, Unga, uh, thank you for your comment. It says, Prairie Oyster Nutty. <laughs> <laughs> Prairie Oysters. Mmm. Good eating. Yeah, I'm not eating Did that. <laughs> I saw. I don't. I don't know if there's a really strange thing that I've ever eaten. Um, nah, no, I I've have eaten you, just normal eaten stuff. Tongue? Have you? Oh, I ate a can of dog food on a bet once. Did you? How was that? I gotta know how. How is that? It, what it it, it? it tastes it's like. Bland. <laughs> huh? Say it again. It's bland. <laughs> it is bland. It tastes it. So it's. They they fortify it with the nutrients that the dog needs mm -hmm. um, and take out all the human stuff because they realize that putting, you know, bone meal and stuff like that makes the dog sick. Uh, yeah. And if you notice, dog poop is no longer white for, for that very reason. They took all the, the bone out of it. Yeah, but white uh, white is normally what happens after it's been there for a long time. Yeah, well, I yeah, but they in order to, you know, they, they, they put all those, those vitamins and shit that the dog needs. It just tastes like bland human food. Yeah, pretty much. Ah. And uh, I didn't get the money from the bet. I so might... That person still owes me 20 bucks. Oh. <laughs> bland food, I was going to say. You, 20 bucks. I, I was going to say, someone is uh, copying my ex-wife's cooking. <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. It That's... was flavorful. I added salt. You had to, you had to say it, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, God. My ex-wife doesn't listen to the show. I don't care. Well, of course she doesn't. One day she finally does, and she's this, like, I'm going to make my own This shows the reason channel. she divorced you, Packard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Actually, some of her cooking some of her cooking was okay. My, I, I did most say, of My ex-wife was and is an excellent cook. Mm. She mm. kept me fat and happy. And I when I do I I go over there, you know, for my for my visits sometimes with my with my daughter. Um mm. and we just hang out in the house. We hang out in her room and we do a thing and she's she'll we you I usually have dinner with them. Mm. Even though she's remarried to another guy. I mean I, this this our weird little family is so cool. That's um, super cool. Yeah. She she cool. makes she makes the most she's the crock pot queen. Ooh. Nice. I love, and she she's like, oh, we're having you know pork roast in in barbecue sauce, and she's been cooking it all day, and it's just, oh. it's meat dripping off the bone. It's just oh. good, good stuff. Yeah, I was I was only kidding. My ex wife actually did cook fairly decently. I just, I I did a lot of cooking too. Backtracking. So. I'm not backtracking. I'm just from, uh, correcting the record. You know, 
a, a box called Hungry Man. Hungry Man, yes, I've I've had that. <laughs> Everybody, sorry. <laughs> uh, do we have any last questions from the chat room? Uh, we had an earlier one from the real Paul Marshall. I did not see that one. I don't. Okay, that's why I wrote it down. Okay. Did you did you send Ritzy any snacks? Did you send Ritzy any snacks? Are you sending uh, snacks to Oregon? Oh, are, are, were they asking me or? Yeah, or they're asking. Yes, yeah, yeah. they're yes. asking. Oh, 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 is this the person that is this the, the shit in Oregon that's going on right now? I oh, I have no idea. Is that what is that? Maybe is that, that what that's in reference I, to? I, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. I threw in Oregon after they said snacks because I thought it fit. Oh, oh, oh. What? No, I'm not going to send them any fucking snacks. Fuck those guys. <laughs> they took over They took over oh, a yeah, gift shop. That. That's what he was referring they, to. They, Dude. they took over an empty gift shop. Way to go, guys. If, if you can rant about that for a second, I would love that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering why that wasn't in the in the Dropbox. Yeah, exactly. Why, is, why isn't that a topic tonight? Um, <laughs> you know... There is was, it a relative, yeah. Packer? Is that why? Yes, they're all relatives. No, I... <laughs> no, no, seriously, those those people, uh, the Bureau of Land Management exists to preserve uh, land for we the people. Mm -hmm. We the people. Yeah. The people who are occupying it say that they're trying to uh, uh, bring it back to us. However, they're stealing our land from ourselves. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And, and they're not doing this for uh, altruistic reasons. They're doing this for religious reasons. The guy yeah, lives, living yeah, in an Oregon. No, and, and they're, they're clear. They are Mormons. Yeah, they are Mormons. And they and said, the, he, said that, he said that he had a vision from God to go do this. Oh wow! I wow! I really, really hate these people now. Yeah, they're they're extremist yeah. Mormons, and that's and that's clear. And they they oh, hate. Wow! I didn't even catch that part of it. They, yeah, I found that out myself just recently. They, they hate quote unquote uh, Negroes because of their mm -hmm. because of their Mormon beliefs, and that goes back to 2014 with Clive and Bundy. However, oh, yeah. it's it's his son who's doing this now, and I think oh, that wow, the twice the son, twice the racism. That's good. I uh... yeah. I, I think the only reason they're doing this is to bring the attention back to his father, right? I yeah. mean. Dawkins, he says, extremist Mormons? Do they wear suicide underpants? <laughs> yeah, they're bulletproof while they wear that shit. No, it's I gotta so, say, uh, of, all so the, of all the religions to deconvert from, because Mormons Mormonism probably has to be the most difficult. usually really, really nice people. Yeah. 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 Because you can, can you imagine being in such a tight-knit community and being loved so much and, you know, they, they present so many opportunities to their to their, you know, parishioners mm -hmm. uh, right. to make money and to and to and to always be secure so long as you're following the rules. Yeah. And then say, no, 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 I'm gay or no, 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 I don't believe anymore. That has to be right. so fucking scary. It has to be. Yeah, it has yeah. to be. I, but but I, I have to say it, regarding this whole occupation of land thing in in Oregon, um, I don't think that Mormonism is the is the key to the whole thing. I think the the key to the whole thing is that we have the children of a racist who is trying to bring notoriety back to his father. Yeah, that's and, a good point. Yeah. That really is. Yeah. Well, un unfortunately, we do have to move on here because otherwise, I'm going to be editing for hours and hours. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, what Atticus, you care about that, Packard. <laughs> Atticus, where can they find your channel? Uh, you can find my channel at youtube.com forward slash finite attic, all one word. The word finite and attic, like, holy shit, there's an attic above my head filled with stuff I don't use anymore. Mm -hmm. um, or you can punch in finite Atticus into the search bar and that will, I'll, I'll come up. Okay, and you have also a podcast you've mentioned several times. Do you want to give us the yes, name of that? Yes, I do a podcast with Jason with a D, who also has a YouTube channel. He's brilliant. Uh, that is my mm -hmm. best friend. Um, the podcast is called Let Me Finish. Um, you can check us out on SoundCloud, iTunes, um, Stitcher. Oh, shit. Where are all the other 
uh, I can't remember the rest of the places. Or just type in "Let me finish." L- or let me. Uh, let me. L e m m e finish. There you go. Um and and uh, let me see. There we have a website as well called the uh, Let Me Listen Podcasts, mm-hmm. all one word dot com. 